This is going to be something that's going to take a little time. And at first, it might seem overkill. But the goal for this little video is to go through the General Motors Early Evaporative Emissions Monitor. We're going to do this at a level that if you repeat this enough times, you can memorize each step of the monitor. All right, so here's the GM monitor, and let's just go straight through how the test runs. First thing the computer does is it turns on the canister purge valve, pulls vapors from the tank in the canister. After a predetermined period of time, the computer is going to actually start running the test. Next thing the computer is going to do is it's going to close the canister vent valve, sealing the system. At this point, with the purge valve turned on, the vent valve turned on, sealing the system, we should pull the tank and the canister into a vacuum. So the computer is going to watch the fuel tank pressure sensor. And if it sees enough vacuum pulled on the tank and the canister, about 8 to 10 inches of water vacuum, then the large leak test passes. If we fail to achieve that much vacuum, the large leak test fails. P0440. But let's say it does pass, so we achieve 10 inches of water vacuum. Next thing the computer does is it leaves the vent valve turned on, it turns off the canister purge valve, taking the manifold vacuum away. At this point, the canister and the tank are sealed. Computer's going to watch that fuel tank pressure sensor to see if the vacuum degrades. It is normal for the vacuum decay. We're allowed to have a 20 thousandths leak. We've also got fuel in the tank, and we're going to have vapors coming off of that fuel. The vapors coming off of that fuel are going to decay the vacuum that was pulled on the tank. The other factor that computers got to consider is how much fuel is in the tank. Here we've got fuel, and we've got this area with all this vapor above it. It's going to take a certain amount of time for that vacuum to decay that the computer can judge that to be a leak that is greater than or less than 20 thousandths of an inch. So keep in mind, seeing the vacuum decay is normal. The question is, how fast is abnormal? Now the next thing the computer is going to do, if we maintain the vacuum for a long enough period of time, small leak test passes, computer turn off the vent valve. We had the purge valve turned off, we turn off the vent valve, we're going to let air in through the canister into the canister in the tank. What's going to happen to this pressure in the tank? We should come up to atmosphere. And if we do, then the canister vent system is working correctly. We're going to move on to the next step. We've got the purge valve turned off. We turn the vent valve back on. What should happen to the pressure in the tank and canister? The answer is it should maintain or increase pressure. What should it not do? Go into a vacuum. If the computer watches and it sees the tank go into a vacuum, what's wrong? Purge valve stuck open. Okay, let's do a review. First step, turn on the canister purge valve, pull vapors from the canister in the tank. Second step, turn on the canister vent valve, sealing the system, and we pull a vacuum. We're looking for 8 to 10 inches of water. And if we achieve that much vacuum, the t large leak test passes, we move on to the small leak test. If we fail to achieve that much vacuum, then the large leak test fails and the, the test stops. If we passed, now we turn off the purge valve, leaving the vent valve turned on, and we watch for the vacuum to decay. If it's too fast, then we're going to set the small leak code, P0442. If we maintain that vacuum for a long enough period of time, then the test passes. Now the canister vent valve is still closed, purge valve is turned off. Next thing the computer does is turn off the canister vent valve, then what should happen to the vacuum? We should rise up to atmospheric pressure. P0440. 
because we just opened a system to atmosphere. If we fail to rise up, then we're going to set that canister vent valve performance. Next thing, we're going to turn on the purge valve. Pull vapors from the tank and canister again because we generated some vapors during the original test. Turn the purge valve back off. Now we turn the vent valve back on. So the purge valve is turned off, vent valve is turned on. What should happen to the tank and canister at this time? And the answer is, it should maintain pressure or increase. What should it not do? Go into a vacuum. If it goes into a vacuum, P1441, incorrect canister purge flow. One of the things I said at the beginning of the video, I'm doing this right now to help you memorize exactly how this test runs and how each code is generated. You're not always going to work on a GM. But good news, Ford works the same way. It's just that the fuel tank pressure sensor works the opposite direction. GM's 1.6 volts and the voltage increases as you go into a vacuum. Ford is 2.6 and the voltage decreases as you go into a vacuum. Other than that, the systems are identical. Toyota has vehicles that run this exact same system. Honda is almost identical to Ford. Almost. There's going to be reasons that we're going to have to study these other manufacturers and these other systems closely, and we will do that in the future. But everything can build just from understanding this system.